On the surface, it can be difficult to find any compelling reason to buy the new Apple TV 4K over Google's Chromecast. They both do a lot of the same things. The Chromecast connects to more of your devices and with the Apple TV being $130 more than Google's Chromecast, it can feel like you're just paying an Apple tax for a device that's not worth its price tag. Well, in this video, I'm gonna compare these two products head to head and show you why, while most people should probably get the Google Chromecast, there is a specific user like myself who's better off getting the Apple TV. Let's jump into it. Hey guys, my name is Daniel Langwish, and on this channel, I create videos covering productivity, digital organization, and tech videos just like this one. So if you're interested in that kind of content, make sure you click the like button below and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all the latest content I'll be putting out. Now for this comparison, I'm gonna go through five different categories that I think are the main categories that you're gonna wanna consider when deciding which of these products you should get. These categories are remote, performance, features, ecosystem, and price. Then I'll finish with which device you should buy, and I've got a link to both of them down below so you can check them out for yourselves and see their most up-to-date prices. With that being said, let's get into it. Arguably the biggest part of Apple's announcement of this new Apple TV was the redesign of the Siri remote. And this remote brings a ton of improvements with it. First, it's made out of aluminum and it just has a really sturdy build that you can tell is gonna hold up over time. The buttons on the remote have a great build quality and they're just really clicky and give good tactile feedback whenever you press them. Now, one of my favorite parts of this new Siri remote is the navigation scroll wheel that they added to the top. This scroll wheel gives you a ton of different options with how you can navigate your Apple TV. It's got the typical up, down, left, right buttons that you can click. And it also has a touch sensitive pad so you can actually swipe your finger and move through uh, lists really quickly. And then it also, the outside ring is a scroll wheel. So similar to an old iPod touch, you can actually move your finger around the outside of the ring and it'll quickly let you uh, scrub through video. And it's just a really useful feature when trying to get to that exact point in a video. I also like the buttons the Siri remote gives you. It's got a back button. It's got a button that goes to the Apple TV app. However, you can actually reprogram it to just take you back to the home screen, which is what I did. It's got a play pause button. And then it's also got a mute button. Thank you, we were all wanting a mute button. And then it's got your typical volume rocker next to it. The power button to power on your Apple TV and your regular TV is at the top. And then on the side is where they moved the Siri button, which is awesome because it stays consistent with the Apple ecosystem of triggering Siri by pressing the side like on your iPhone. The Siri remote also charges with lightning. And while I probably would have liked to see USB-C, uh, I really like that it has charging as an option. Overall, I think Apple really knocked it out of the park with this remote, and it's one of my favorite parts of using this new Apple TV. Now, while the Siri remote is more boxy and kind of rigid and kind of has this premium feel, the Chromecast remote is much more soft and has kind of a playful design. And this can lead into both its pros and its cons. The first thing you'll notice when holding this remote compared to the Apple TV remote is that it's made out of plastic and naturally that just makes it feel much less premium. However, despite being made out of plastic, I have been using it for a while and it has really held up well, so I wouldn't have any concerns over its durability over long periods of time. I will say that the Chromecast remote is a lot more comfortable to hold in your hand. It's got this, you know, rounded edge here, and so it kind of fits naturally into your hand, whereas the, you know, boxy nature of the Apple TV remote uh, even though it looks great, it's a little less comfortable to hold in your hand. While the Apple TV buttons are very clicky and give you great tactile feedback, the Chromecast buttons are a little more mushy um, and give you a little less of that feedback. Let me see if I can get a comparison here. So here is the Apple TV buttons. And here is Chromecast buttons. 
It's still not bad, but I could definitely like the buttons on the Apple TV more. Now, similar to the Siri remote, Google included a back button. They've got a mute button. They've got a button that takes you to the home screen automatically, love that. Rather than Apple who put the Siri button on the side of the remote, Google actually put the Chromecast button right on the front. And I think I prefer it this way as this is more natural as to where my thumb rests, where with the Apple remote, I have to kind of twist my wrist a little bit to press the Siri button. And it's a minor complaint, but uh, worth mentioning. Navigation is a little more limited on the Chromecast. It's just got your typical uh, up, down, left, right. Um, nothing to complain about, but it's just worth mentioning that the that is an advantage of the Siri remote. And finally, the Chromecast put the volume controls actually on the side. And again, I'm not a huge fan of this as similar to how I have to twist my wrist for Siri on the Apple remote, I kind of have to do the same thing when I'm trying to press the volume on the Chromecast. And volume is something you're gonna be changing a lot more often, so I really prefer how the Apple remote has the volume controls right under your thumb. The last notable thing about the Chromecast remote is that it has two preset buttons to connect to your various services. So it's got a YouTube, and a Netflix. And it's worth noting that YouTube can be programmed to go to either YouTube or YouTube TV, which is what I had it connect to as that's the service I use. And then Netflix, obviously Netflix would make the most sense, um, but you could also connect it to, I think there's some other services that you could have it automatically jump to. And while I like that they have those shortcuts directly to services, I kind of wish it was just generic buttons that you could program because it feels a little weird to press your Netflix button and it goes to a different service. So while I don't think you'll be disappointed with either of these remotes, my preference is the Apple TV remote. Now when looking at the performance of each of these devices, this is where we start to see some of the differences and some of where that Apple price tag comes from. See the Apple TV 4K is powered by the A12 Bionic chip and it's the same chip that's in the iPhone XS and it is extremely snappy. I have seriously never had had one moment of it even remotely lagging. And honestly, if you're just using this as a streaming device, the A12 chip might be overkill, but where it really comes in handy is if you're using other services like Apple Arcade, where you're playing games and stuff like that. Now the Chromecast on the other hand is powered by a quad core AM Logic processor. Now here's what you need to know. The Chromecast will be fast enough for just about anything that you do. However, you will have the occasional time where you're loading up an app or you're just trying to navigate through and you'll see a little bit of lag. This wasn't a deal breaker for me and it was fairly rare, but it is something you will notice compared to the Apple TV. Both devices support 4K HDR playback at 60 frames per second, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, and all of the same streaming services. Yes, you can even use the Apple TV app on the Chromecast. There's just something funny about that. And then the only other main difference in terms of the specs is that the Apple TV comes in either 32 or 64 gigabytes of storage, whereas the Chromecast is only eight gigabytes. Now again, eight gigabytes should be enough for most people. It was enough for me, but I can see why Apple did it this way as this is a device that's not just for streaming, but also so you can download games on Apple Arcade. You can download your movies and stuff like that. So overall, this is a category where the Apple TV significantly outperforms the Chromecast, and it's a device that should hold up really well for years to come. Now when looking through the different just miscellaneous features that these devices have to offer. The first thing I wanna bring up is the home screen layout. Now, while this is probably up to preference, I think this is a win for Google. This might be because I'm subscribed to YouTube TV, a Google service, but I really liked Google's home screen, how it had suggested live TV of the things that I usually watch right at the front. And then as I scroll down, it's got suggested TV shows, suggested movies. Um, I just found it was, much more helpful in bringing to light content that I might wanna watch. Now the Apple TV on the other hand has a bit more of a bland home screen layout. It's really just your apps. It's just kind of an app library. Now certain apps when you are hovered over them will suggest content like I have Spotify 
and it'll suggest my most recent played playlist, which is cool. And I love how Netflix actually will suggest my last watch show. So I can immediately, I don't even have to go into the Netflix app. I can just hover over it and then go up and click on the show and it immediately jumps back into it. But overall, I kind of just find Apple's home screen to be less useful as most of the time I have to actually go into an app to get to where I want to go. Whereas the Chromecast, I still have to sometimes go into apps, but it has a lot of great suggested content. Now, each of these devices have their own way of helping you get content from your personal device to the TV. And for the Chromecast, this is casting your content. And for the Apple TV, this is with Apple AirPlay. Now I find each of these options has their strengths and weaknesses, and I've tested them extensively. Uh, Chromecasting is really great in that it works on any device, Android, Apple, uh, they all have the option of casting to the TV. And I really like that since the Chromecast is streaming the content from the device to the internet and it's not mirroring the content from your phone to the Chromecast, it really saves the battery life on your phone. AirPlay, on the other hand, I found was a lot more convenient if you had a lot of AirPlay devices around your home. It was super easy to connect your audio to different AirPlay devices. I love the simplicity in Apple where you can just pull up Control Center and tap all the AirPlay devices that you want your audio to connect to. And this was something that I found possible with Chromecast, but it just wasn't quite as seamless. And also AirPlay is much more polished when it comes to uh, screen mirroring and uh, mirroring your display from whether your iPhone or your MacBook to the TV. I could do this with the Chromecast. I could, I could mirror my tab or even they have a beta for mirroring your whole display, but it was always a bit laggy, a bit buggy, whereas AirPlay was super seamless and it actually felt like I was using my TV as a secondary display, which is pretty cool. The winner of this category really comes down to preference. I definitely prefer the home screen layout of the Google Chromecast, but the stability of AirPlay, and if you have other AirPlay devices, that is a huge selling point with the Apple TV. Now, I think something important to realize when buying either of these devices is that you're not just buying the device itself, but you're actually buying into an ecosystem. So the way each of these devices integrates into either your uh, Apple or Google ecosystem is really important. And with the Apple TV, this is a huge selling point assuming you're using all Apple devices. The Apple TV can act as a hub for your HomeKit ecosystem, meaning that you can connect and control your HomeKit devices when you're away from home. You know when you've, you're have you logging into a service on your streaming device and it has you enter text and normally you gotta pull out your remote and move through the keyboard and it takes forever? Well, the Apple TV recognizes that you're entering text and on your iPhone, it'll have a little pop-up and you can type the information in on your iPhone and it'll immediately go to your Apple TV. It just works. Activating Siri on your remote will let you control any of your HomeKit devices around the home. And since this is an Apple device, it has direct integration with other Apple services such as Apple Fitness and Apple Music. So with Apple Fitness, you can have your workout going on on your TV and then your Apple Watch is connecting to your Apple TV and showing your rings live on the TV. One feature that I think is super cool is if you have a HomeKit enabled doorbell such as the Logitech Circle View doorbell, uh, you can have it connect to your Apple TV so that when someone rings the doorbell, there is a pop-up that comes up on your Apple TV when you're in the middle of watching a show or something that'll show a live view of who's at the door. And if you wanna check out that doorbell for yourself, I've got a link to it down below. The Apple TV can be easily controlled by your other Apple devices, by your iPad, your iPhone, your Apple Watch. And this is actually one of the tips that I give in a recent video that I put out of my top 15 tips for getting started with the Apple TV. And you can check that out with the link above or I'll link it down in the description below. So as you would expect, the Apple TV is exceptional if you have Apple devices everywhere around you. However, if you are not in the Apple C ecosystem, then 
This is really just an overpriced streaming box. The Chromecast, on the other hand, is not as deeply integrated as the Apple TV, but it works for a much larger range of people. Now this can be viewed as a pro or a con depending on if you're looking for versatility or integration. With Google Assistant, you can control all of your Google devices, which as most people know, there are a lot more Google compatible devices than there are Siri. So while the Apple TV is the perfect fit, for an Apple ecosystem. The Google Chromecast is something that I could recommend to someone in a Google ecosystem, in an Alexa ecosystem, or honestly, if you don't even have a smart home at all, this is the streaming device I would recommend. And even if up until this point, the Apple TV has been better and better in all the categories, this is where the Chromecast kills it. Like, this is just an unbelievable value. So $50, for the Chromecast, you get all of these features. Being only $50, this is seriously a product that I would recommend to almost anyone. I got one for my own parents, and it's a device that is so easy to recommend because it, it just doesn't break the bank and it works so well. Now the Apple TV, on the other hand, has a steep $179 price tag, and that's just for the base 32 gigabyte model. And honestly, even for myself who bought an Apple TV, that is a hard price to swallow. I mean, I know it comes with extra power and deeper integration, and I'm someone in the Apple ecosystem, but there was still part of me that's like, am I really utilizing the extra power? Am I really utilizing the extra features? And there really was a temptation to just stick with my old faithful $50 Chromecast. So in terms of value, there is just no argument here. The Chromecast destroys the Apple TV in the value department. And this all leads into the question of which one should you buy? And while there are a lot of factors, it really boils down to this. If you are so deeply ingrained in the Apple's ecosystem, you are committed to a home kit home, uh, you have Apple devices everywhere, then the Apple TV is wonderful. And I'm assuming since you're already kind of going down the Apple trail, you're not afraid of paying a little more for things to have deep integration and things just work really well together. And so with that, paying a little more then maybe you would want to for a streaming device, but knowing that it just works super well with all your other Apple devices and is really well made, is gonna last a long time and just has a premium feel, I think it's gonna be worth it for you. However, if you do not fall into that narrow category, then definitely go with the Google Chromecast. It has been such a joy to use for me and I honestly believe it is one of the best tech values out there right now. But what do you guys think? Which uh, streaming device would you choose? Uh, what are you using? Let me know down in the comments below. I really think these are two great devices and just really depend on the ecosystem you're in and what your needs are. And hey, if you wanna learn more about the Apple TV, I've got a video right here going through my top 15 tips for getting started with the Apple TV. I've got a lot of great suggestions here, or you can check out another one of my videos that YouTube is suggesting to you right now. But either way, I'll catch you in the next video. Until next time.